I'm presenting on behalf of the team that produced the update to the prostate cancer guideline from 2019 in the areas of genetic testing, which actually delayed the publication of the guideline from our normal November to March because of the significance of the changes. The NCCN guidelines use expertise from many, and we have actually added Heather Cheng to our panel to provide the necessary expertise for our update. The prostate cancer guideline is updated at least annually and many times more often than that. Guideline updates are in response to many, many things, uh, but most importantly to FDA approvals or publication of critical manuscripts or clinical trials. The prostate can cancer guidelines draw a great deal of interest as demonstrated by their increased usage just in the last year. Our three members and Heather Cheng were responsible primarily for the many updates that occurred. We wanted to provide more guidance as to what constituted a careful family history, both a better family history of prostatic cancer and a better family history of risk for genetic mutations. We had previously reorganized the risk group assignment and made more clear when germline testing was recommended. In low-risk disease, that recommendation is really only if family history is positive or the prostate biopsy re revealed intraductal histology. In high-risk disease, genetic testing is recommended whether family history is positive or not. Increased information was provided about exactly what mutations should be carefully queried, as well as the prevalence of inherited gene mutations to provide a ready reference for practicing physicians. The guideline changes were so extensive that we sought to explain them in a publication two months later in JNCCN, whose first author was Heather Cheng. To help practitioners incorporate this into their practice, we've reduced the very complex slide that appeared in that manuscript to a series of slides that provide more bite-sized information. And the first shown here is for how to determine when to do germline genetic testing. The national shortage in genetic counselors uh, needs to be addressed by having more genetic counselors trained and available, but also by increasing knowledge of uh, the physicians who care for men with prostate cancer. This is especially important when dealing with the finding of a germline variant of uncertain significance. In advanced prostate cancer, germline testing is always recommended, and this is when analysis of the tumor itself becomes important when that advanced disease is associated with regional lymph node metastases or widespread metastases. Here, in a germline testing is also recommended, but molecular and biomarker analysis of the tumor should be considered. Once prostate cancer becomes castration resistant, then an additional opportunity becomes available. That is to consider biopsying a metastatic lesion, which then can be assessed for the presence of homologous recombination gene mutations. The identification of such would prompt germline testing if not already performed. 
and genetic counseling, a, a bite-sized algorithm for somatic testing uh, is included. Dr. Hagano proposed an algorithm that operationalizes genetic testing in the setting of metastatic disease that could be used as a roadmap for medical oncologists. Genetic testing poses challenges such as not all DDR gene mutations are the same. Most importantly, there are thousands of BRCA gene mutations identified, and many of them are not yet been determined whether they're functional or not, and it is believed that many of the variants of uncertain clinical significance will be found non-pathogenic. In addition to the complexity of testing, testing can be expensive and confusing to patients because of the variety of responses of payers causing them different amounts of copays. So providers must become more familiar with basic information about genetics to assume certain aspects of the genetic pretest counseling and even management of the results of counseling due to the national shortage of genetic counselors. So our primary problem is that genetic testing is relatively new. It's being performed more frequently. And we have a complexity of information available to us and a shortage of genetic counselors to help us. So the NCCN prostate panel is going to continue to interact closely with the prostate cancer early detection panel. And through our NCCN infrastructure, we're going to attempt to provide congruency with the breast, ovarian, and colorectal guidelines genetic recommendations. We clearly need more genetic counselors, and all of us need to become more informed about genetic testing. Most importantly, we need to continue to adapt our guidelines in response to the explosion of genetic information. And we should be helped in this effort by the 2019 Philly Consensus Conference recommendations, which will be um, coming soon, as well as continued revisions of the prostate cancer treatment and early detection guidelines.